Hello there. I am No Name. I'm an Advanced Wars player of about one month. I started around January, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, January. And uh, yeah, I was inspired to start playing Advanced Wars by web from watching the commentary videos of Manx and Digis. And you know, I've always been a fan of turn-based tactical games like Fire Emblem. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, those kind of games, but I've never really played a lot of PvP turn-based games aside from chess. Um, I guess my only experience with competitive PvP game was Wargroove, but yeah, let's just say I didn't do too well there. So when I started playing the official league, I did horribly. Like, I think I lost my first three matches. But after that, I had a really good winning streak, and I feel like I'm, you know, I'm getting the hang of the game. I'm doing like I, I'm gaining a lot of tactical wisdom while playing the game. And fast forward to the present, uh, I'm already at 1.1k uh, MMR, and I feel like I'm, you know, I'm quite decent at the game already. However, I feel like I played too many league games too soon. That at the end of January, or yeah, the end of January, I was already feeling so burnt out from the game that I thought I had to take a break. And that's where the idea of making replay commentaries came into mind. So, in the past month, I've played some epic games with fellow players here on the site where I learned a lot of insights with regards to strategy and whatnot. So, I'm like, why not? You know, let's start. A replay YouTube channel. You know, what I mean, there's a lot of Advance Wars by Web replay channels that are just popping out right now. So you know, why not join in on the fun? That's it about me. Let's let's get on to the match. All right. So for this game, um, we're fighting at a map called Crossfire Schwarzeld. I don't know who made it. But it's a pretty cool map. Uh, it's very big, very open, lots of plains, and also lots of forest in the lots of forests in the center. So these forests here, they're very good artillery tiles. Like you can plop in artillery there and defend a lot of properties. Also, you'd be fighting a lot in these in these two mountains to get vision, especially in the late game when you're trying to capture the headquarters if you're onto that and another thing unique about this map is that there are two comp towers so both players would have 20 percent increased firepower so that means both players can do a lot of two hit ko moves uh for example on a property any player can two hit ko an infantry with two infantries this will come into play later on, so it's it's an interesting aspect of this map. As for the CEOs, so I'm playing Drake. With Drake, uh, he doesn't really have a day-to-day -day power. Like, yeah, he has a day-to-day -day power with naval units, but you won't really see this into play. I guess there's a black boat with plus one movement, but that's about it. Like, does it, it's not really that significant. So, by all intents and purposes, he doesn't have a day-to-day -day power. The enemy, or enemy that sounds a bit weird, but yeah, the one I'm playing against, he's playing as Andy. So Andy, just like Drake, he has no day-to-day -day abilities. But yeah I, for, I, yeah, I forgot to talk about their powers. So, with Drake, his CO power, uh, Tsunami, basically... Global damage, 1 HP. It's it's not that good. It can be useful in some situations, especially if you want to kill off a unit. Especially since you're playing with Annie where you really want to kill off a unit. Could be viable, but what you really want to save up for is Typhoon. So Typhoon, it's global damage, 2 HP. And also changes weather terrain for one day, which is very useful in this map considering there are a lot of plane tiles in the center where most of the engagements are going to happen. So 
implication there is that reinforcement is gonna be a lot slower if you're if you're playing against Drake. So your units in the center could be isolated and can be wiped out, and you can't do a proper counter attack. In the other corner, here's Andy. Hyper repair, all unit gain, all units gain two HP. So that could be a good counter to Drake's Typhoon. Like after Drake pops pops up Typhoon, just just press hyper repair, and every unit's gonna be as good as new. His superpower, which is probably the thing that makes Andy really good, is hyper upgrade. All units gain five HP plus ten percent attack and one movement. That is insane. Like you can have a one HP tank sit on a city, pop up hyper upgrade. Hyper upgrade. It's gonna get eight HP if it healed up on the city. And if Drake pop his typhoon the turn before, it basically nullifies whatever typhoon had done except for the fuel drain, which isn't really that relevant. And you know, it still be pretty viable. So the trick when you're playing against Andy is that you kill off his units. You do not leave a 1 HP unit once Andy has his superpower ready. Because those things are just going to come back to life and bite you in the ass. So it's really important to kill them off. And that's where Typhoon enters. Because intuitively, you would think Andy is a good counter to Drake. Because basically, his power neutralizes his Drake's super seal power but that's not really the case which you will see later on in the match because Typhoon not only reduces 2 HP to all units they also in effect reduce 20% defense from the opponent uh, from, from, from Andy's units so at 8 HP with 20% less defense they're easier to kill and especially in this map where there are two comp towers, Andy is at a disadvantage here because it's a lot easier to kill off his units. So between the two COs, I believe Drake has the upper hand here, but I don't think that their power difference is that big that it could you know, become one of the turning points. But I personally believe that Drake is a lot stronger in this matchup. But yeah, uh, that's it about the CO, let's get on to the match. All right, so let's start. Um, okay, so standard infantry. Hmm, don't know why he moved his black boat there, but okay. But yeah, basically standard infantry, infantry. So I'm putting. I don't know what I'm doing with my black boat. Even like if you, yeah, if you just watch this black boat, it's going to be the most useless black boat you've ever seen. And I, I don't think I did a very good job of, of utilizing that. So, standard infantry build, you know, nothing really, nothing, nothing's happening yet. Like, yeah, yeah. Infantry, infantry. Okay, yeah, not, not much of interest yet. Day three, still, still infantry spam. No one's opening up, opening up, um, attack recon. Nothing yet. So keeps going, and then day four. Let's see, and I think yeah, there we go. I open an artillery. The reason why I open an artillery is because this is gonna be my strong side. So what I want to do is to put an artillery here in this forest, so that it would protect, it would deny these properties, this, this, and this. It would deny them properties and I could capture them later on. Like I'd move once I have once I'm more established here, I can plop it here in the center and then just put like blockers here. And basically anyone who tries to then anyone who tries to interrupt my cap is gonna get blasted. So that, that that was my strategy coming in here uh to this. Will that work? Well, let's see later on. Okay, so day five. Um, let's see, he just captures, what does he open with? He opens with a tank. Now, this could be bad, because I opened with an artillery, he has a tank. Let's see if it will be able to punish me, punish my opening. Alright, next. Okay, normal infantry build, normal. 
Okay, my, art my artillery is trudging along towards this for a spot. And I build a recon because I'm gonna need vision for this artillery to hit. Right now, if this opening already has some consequences to it, which will manifest later on. So, okay, cool, capture phase, capture phase. Okay, just capturing. Like, we're, yeah, we're pretty even on, on caps right now. Okay, so there we go. Re recon moves, and I open a tank on the center. So the reason why I open a tank on the center is so that I think it will be more flexible. Like, I could plop it in the middle, and depending on where it's needed, I can move it down or move it up. So, and also, another reason is I needed an infantry here. Notice that on this side of the map, I only have one infantry capping. And that is, I'm missing out on a lot of properties. Like, I'll take, it'll take a lot of time for me to capture this, especially this one, because it's going to be very contested. So, as much as possible, I need more infantries on this side. So, that's also another reason why I put this on the center, not here. So, on his face, yeah, he's just sneakily moving in his tank. Like, there's nothing yet to interrupt here, because I'm kind of slow on that front. But, yeah. Okay. Just keeps on. Then, yeah, he also built a recon and then an artillery. So, basically, we have the same army composition right now. The only difference is our positioning. So, day 7. And capture properties and recon goes to the city nothing's happening yet he has no vision of anything that's what that i'm planning to do here so do i i'm not seeing any of his units yet um keep going tank and then yeah i load an infantry to the black boat and then popped up another infantry to load it here in the next turn and i built an early anti-air the reason for this is i wanted to be very proactive with the anti-air like because at this turn i know he just finished capturing his airport because i had just finished capturing my airport if we did the same capture route then he must have already at least he could build a battle copter as early as now so i wanted to preempt that and just be ready so I'll, i'm planning to put this somewhere in the center where it can either shift up or shift down depending on where a battle copter pops up. So this is very preemptive of me. Will it pay off? Let's see. Okay, capture phase. There we go. And there we go. I see the tank and I'm like, okay, I don't have a counter to that tank yet because my recon. Okay, my recon ain't interrupting any caps here. So this recon's like lost there's nothing to attack so let's move on like and he's already in position to cap this well if he if he if he tries to cap it that is okay so i move i finally move it to this to this forest right here and then i hide the i hide this recon here and then yeah, there we go. I put the tank just in range to retaliate if ever he places it here. Because the weakness of this formation is that this tank or something could reveal this recon, like maybe this infantry put this here, and then this tank could attack here. That means artillery can't reach it, and so his recon can basically his recon and, uh, and his tank could basically do hit KO this. I'm not sure if it can with just one comp tower because we haven't captured either of our comp towers yet or our second comp towers rather. I don't know if it's going to be do hit KO but yeah this was a very vulnerable position like if I would mm, if I would um, replay this I would probably have this Okay, that's another mistake. Like, I, I should have pushed forward. Because right now, I don't have any infantry here. Like, I have two, but it's not as good. So I probably should have, instead of, I sh I, instead of, like, dedicating 
an infantry to this cap. I should have just like used one of these infantry to cap this and then push this to the to this contested property. Because I have no infantry here. He has like four infantry trying to cap this. So already I'm at a disadvantage and I have nothing here. So yeah, it's it's really bad man. Okay. Okay. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have attacked this. What I could have done is place the infantry here. So the tank could go for it. Yeah, if I place it here, it's a guarantee that this tank will get shelled by the artillery if ever it it tries to attack my recon. Because I think he saw the recon coming in, but he didn't see the artillery. Like, yeah, he didn't see the artillery come in, but he saw the recon enter the sport. So I was very much aware that there's a recon here. So I could have placed this infantry here instead of attacking. So hindsight would have been probably a better move since I have something to interrupt this cap anyway. So yeah, not a very good call on my end. Yeah, he just repaired it. So yeah, standard movement. So yeah, recon, I think it kills it. Yep, it's dead now. And he starts capping. Yep, there you go. Hits it. And just like I predicted, he would put the tank here, revealing my artillery, and I can't fire a shot here. Luckily, I was prepared for that. Have a tank ready. And I have a tank ready to retaliate here. Or ready to first strike this rally. So, okay. Yep, I think he's, yep, he, the recon doesn't die. So, too bad. Okay. So now I have an option. I could interrupt one of I could interrupt this cap. Or I could kill the recon. And right now, I think I want to kill the recon. Cause that's vision. That's a that's vision that would be lost on their end. As much as possible, I really don't want to get rid of the vision. Like the, only, the main vision that he would have would be through the, these mountains. Aside from that, I want I want him to see nothing. So he sh took a shot at the recon, and this should have killed, but it didn't. So this was a bad luck roll. This was a, this was a low roll on my end. This should have died, like with, especially with a comp tower. This should have died, but whatever. Like, thank god I have this one HP recon to finish off the job. Yeah, before I did that, yeah, first strike on the tank and he doesn't have anything to retaliate with. So, that's another cool thing about recons, especially, um, in, especially when you put them on defensive property, is that you can use them to bait out a tank. Since I see the artillery here, I see the recon. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a tank yet that's ready to back it up. That's ready to back ready to uh, back this tank up. And this tank was pretty early too. So once I saw these two, I know there wasn't a tank that's going to retaliate. So and that's right. He had an ATC here and the tank's just nowhere near to retaliate. So yeah. And then look at my black boat, it's almost dead. Like it's it has 16 and it has to make it through here to refuel. It takes like, spoiler alert, it doesn't refuel and it dies. So one HP recon to recon. As much as I didn't want to do this, because I wanted to keep this recon alive for vision, I had to kill his vision. Like, yeah. So now he has a tank. And yeah, this tank's this tank could still be useful if I don't kill it. That's also another reason why I killed the recon, because aside from the vision, I also don't want this recon to come back at like 6 HP and then kill an infantry or something. So that's one, that's one thing. And then, yep, I interrupt this gap, so he'll have this one. Which sucks, but whatever. Okay, and then I build my first battle copter. Drake has, yeah, I forgot to mention a while ago. Drake doesn't have a day-to-day -day power, but he has sucky battle copters. Not sucky, sucky, but like, it's not as good. It has like 20% firepower decrease, which makes it a great 
battle copter and with grits battle copter sucks so yeah jake jake's battle copters also suck but in this game especially with two com towers you know it's still pretty useful I mean, even if it's a Drake Battle Copter, it would still necessitate an anti-air. It could still do pretty good damage to a tank. So, you know, it's still worth it. I would still build Battle Copters even, even when using Drake. And you'd see Battle Copters here were probably were pretty good. So, I wouldn't rule them out. So, okay. Infantry movement. Cool, cool. Alright, so he starts capping this. I am just falling behind in terms of capture. Like, oh no, it gets interrupted. He's already capped this, I haven't capped this one. So I'm just I'm just I'm just behind and my and my regon dies. Of course it does. It's annoying. So he has good vision here because of this uh because of this inventory. And yeah, he has attack and a recon and I have nothing here. This is literally my weak side because it only has infantry. Like, yeah, I really need to uh, reinforce this because, uh, yeah, it's not going. It's not going well for me. Let's just let's just say that. And uh, okay, infantry. And yeah, he builds a battle copter. So this one is already, it's already in position to counter this. But it's gonna be useless for like two more turns. Because it will take at least like two thirds for this battle copter to reach the center. So yeah, let's see where it goes. And there we go. I put it in the mountain. So I see as an artillery here. So it's not it's not like I could probably break through. Like if I kill this, I could go. I think that's what I do. Yeah. And then I take a shot at this artillery. So I don't see the APC. So there could have been a tank right at retaliation range but yeah one two three four five six yeah no yeah no yeah that's this tank is fine but yeah this tank already doing a lot of work like damage this artillery damage this tank but the thing is i'm playing against andy I have to kill these one way or another so this anti-air is just waiting for a copter and okay then tank tanks are here two tank backups now and just first strike this infantry because why not and then build an artillery to defend here so my game plan here usually is either to put an artillery in this forest or put it behind this mountain just to secure this so no one captures this it's usually the more defensive side because this this is supposed to be my strong side but as you can see i kind of fuck it up so right now i i'm losing on both sides because i can't capture these i don't have a strong presence here i'm getting a, I'm, I'm i'm getting a draw here like i'm supposed to be winning strongly here but since it's both our strong sides we're kind of draw we're, yeah, we're kind of even here, but he has the one property. I don't have one property. I'm winning the center though, I think. Like, he could still interrupt this, but I, I'm I'm positioned to take the center because most of my units are there. But yeah, in terms of the sides, yeah, I'm losing heavily there. And yeah, just put this for vision and this here, you know, just to be annoying. And day 11 captures this and then... He gets vision and he sees I have nothing here. And he pops up a mech. And Christ that mech is in. And look at that. Now I now I have nothing to counter this. So it's not early game, not going well for me. And he even joined caps. So yeah, I ha I, I can't let them have this. I can't. So and battle copters are moving, recon cars moving, okay. And yep, kills my infantry and then and then yeah. Interrupts that. But my artillery is doing work here right now. Look at that. Wait, no, not yet, but yeah, interrupt scap. Haven't taken my freaking comp tower. 
So I'm already at the firepower disadvantage because I don't know why it took me forever to capture my comp tower. He should have captured it the same. I think there was a turn where I forgot to move this infantry. That's why I'm delayed by one turn capturing this comp tower. So yeah, that's not gonna work. And yeah, I'm just I'm just first striking his infantry, killing it, and then not sure if I do something here with this tank. I should retreat it. But yeah, right now I'm just trying to outlast this because I have I these infantry are just here to hold on until this artillery gets into position. Like these two could as much as possible I want these two to go down because that's where the conflict is happening, but I need some forces here. So let's see what I do. Okay, yep. In, like this artillery is just doing work and he has like he, yeah, he has this to to hit it but like does he really want to hit it I have like I have two tanks ready to counter attack there so maybe not but yeah let's see so build another tank and a copter okay pretty, pretty standard and look at this black boat Black Boat is too fuel. It's not going to make it to the harbor. So, sad. Yeah, that was a waste of a Black Boat. And, yep, takes pretty good engagement, like, from the city. And this tank, yeah, nope, it's not looking very good for that tank. That battle copper is here. You don't see it yet. But, there we go. Bang. And yeah, my infantry are just taking a beat in here. So I can't even capture this property. Christ. So yeah, I don't even have vision here. That's how bad I was going. And I needed recon. Why wasn't I building recons here? Because I need vision here. So. Okay, my artillery. Well, it's in position to damage this. Is to uh, is in position to uh, defend this infantry. So yeah, right now I'm just putting my infantry on forests. Like I want, I want him to work for. I want him to work, work for it when he kills these infantry. Like spend at least two units breaking them down. I don't care. But yeah, he's getting this property. There's no way in hell I'm going to be able to interrupt that. So. Okay, yeah, that one's dead. I think I'm gonna get this. Like, he has nothing to interrupt except for this recon. Oh yeah, he has two recons. That's annoying. Oh yeah, one thing. You don't want your recons to be in the same part of the map. Because right now, one recon should give you the vision. This one's not doing anything. Like, it would be... It would be a lot, this recon would be a lot more useful right in this forest just to give more vision of what's happening here. So two recons at the same side of the map, I don't usually agree with that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, anyway, if it works, it works. But let's see if it works on this end. So yeah, right now my anti-air is just, just chilling there. Not going to move it. So... Okay, build another anti-air because I re I realize what if it's here that the copter attacks like this one's kind of far I mean I have a copter here but you know what you can't have too many anti-airs and I finally capture my top tower thank god that's day 13 and he moves yeah it gets trapped got trapped like everyone's just getting trapped and then yep he kills this C6 HP Yeah, everyone's getting trapped right now. Like, who died? Oh yeah, there's an infantry who died here. Yeah, kills the tank. And then, probably gonna get a free hit from this recon. But it's not free. They have two tanks. So, that's another tr um, another possible use for an artillery. It can be used to lure out the units. Like, it can, yeah, it can be used as a bait. Because... There's nothing more satisfying than shooting an artillery, especially one that has been bugging you 
for like tur- uh for like five turns and it's been bugging him for since the beginning of the game since we started the engagement here this artillery has been blasting so it must have been really it must be really satisfying to take a shot at this artillery but what he doesn't see is i have three tanks waiting on waiting on the shadows and i also have an anti-air deal with his battle copter if ever he decides to attack with his uh with his copter yep it's perfectly in range so let's see what he does i think he yeah if he gets vision that's good yeah he spots it attacks it and then the follow-up boom dead artillery but that artillery just even at death is probably it's probably been more useful when it died because now there are two tanks right in my range that are just waiting to get killed so the copter like yeah he's trying to attack my cop he's trying to attack my copter here but yeah whatever he's still his anti-air is out of position so that's fine and another copter and there we go my black boat is dead okay and then uh, there we go first tank copter arrives he doesn't have vision over it is he two three oh, okay that was my fault that was kind of stupid of me i should have killed this infantry first before i put my copter because now he sees i have a copter here so he's probably gonna build another anti-air but whatever that's fine it's actually good if he builds an anti-air an anti-air isn't a tank that's that's the positive side here so yep that's dead it's some damage and jesus look at this artillery i missed it whatever should have just attacked here and yeah anti-air finishes top so i attack with my anti-air i revealed it without ever seeing a copter yet so he doesn't he has a tank to punish me but thankfully, I have another anti-air and a copter to, to, to ward off any copter. So, I, that's good, I guess. And, yeah. Look at that. Like, 4 HP. See? I mean, it's with two comp towers, but you can see, Drake copters are still pretty viable. If it were any other CO, it's probably going to be at 2 or 3 HP. This is basically an Eagle copter with two comp towers, but... Yeah, Drake Copter is still, still pretty good. So, and there, I build a recon and I build a transport copter here. My plan was to just ferry mechs to these two mountains and defend this one property. Because right now, I'm probably going to lose this. I'm going to lose this property because I did such a bad job defending it. So now I need cheap units to just defend this. Like an artillery and a couple of mechs on these mountains should be good enough defense while I focus on trying to get both these properties at, properties at the center and right now i don't have any ambitions of capturing these two properties so right now my only hope is to capture these two properties here so that's the game plan right now and infantry moves okay and yeah he starts capping with his mech and i have nothing to interrupt it so and he's also he, look at that he's at this super as he's at this super power but thankfully doesn't have any units that's worth repairing like maybe this that but i would argue that's not a good enough reason especially this tank isn't going to be landing a killing blow and something so he holds it off and he also knows that my super power is incoming so that's probably why he doesn't pop it right about now because I think he would want to pop his superpower once I pop my typhoon, so that basically cancels cancels it out. Yeah, yeah. Infantry is just dying, not capturing this, haven't captured this. I'm losing by 3k, and that's gonna be I'm gonna be losing by 5k after this property is captured. So it's the early the game. It's really not going well. He also gets a shot at this. Oh god, that's annoying. But yeah. Yeah, he probably had the courage since he knew my anti-air was here. So, my anti-air is here and it's damaged. But here's the thing about Drake's superpower. 
boom. It does two things. First, the global damage. So now, I could easily kill this copter because it has... Although the, the defense won't really matter because it's it has zero defense either way, but it's easier to kill. I have another copter here. So, first I position my artillery to blast this off. But yeah, he'd still be able to capture it because it, it's going to repair and capture it. So, this property is gone. Like, I don't have any hopes for that. But yeah, look at this. And boom. And since it's raining and since it's on flames, this anti-air wouldn't be able to reach it. Because it can only move three squares on planes. Like one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and six. He has to pop his superpower for this to work. For for this uh anti-air to reach my copter. And yep, I just I'm, I'm just killing his units because I know that hyper upgrade's coming, so yeah, I just repair this because the thing with anti-air is that it's still pretty useful even at like 5 HP. So as much as possible, keep your anti-air alive even at 1 HP. Try to heal it up to like 6, 6 or 7 and it's st it can still do pretty good damage against the copter. So yeah, never let your anti-air die. And yep, I'm just killing his units. And then, yep, I'm just preparing to kill this because he's gonna cap this. So I, I need to capture this back as soon as possible because like a 5k lead, that's not very good. Okay, cool. Just kills it. Kills it. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just killing units right now. And there we go. See, it can't reach. He can reach it with the superpower, but here's his mistake. He uses Hyper Repair. I get it. Like, there's not much units to heal. Like, you have an infantry that's gonna be at 9. It's not gonna be capping this in 2 turns. And what else? He has this that, you know... He has this, which can be full HP, but it's not really gonna attack anything. So, you, would, you might think that Hyper... Like using his normal power would be good, but if he had used his superpower, this anti-air could have killed this battle copter. So I think that was like a really crucial mistake. Because I think this battle copter, it's gonna hit on something before it dies. Because I think, yeah, I think this battle copter is gonna die. Yeah, spoiler alert. But yeah, let's see what he does. He captures. You know, yeah, right now it's not really, it's not looking good. He has a 5k lead ahead of me. And uh, yeah, he just kills my tank and then just shoots at everything. Yeah, it's not looking good. Mm, yeah, look at this. It's too Okay, it's not doing well. Let's just let's 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 face it. And he has another anti air. Uh, I don't know why. He might maybe because he thought I would build another copter. Whatever. Yeah, it's, all, it's always good. You can never have too many anti-airs. And yep. It's dead now, so I could capture that next turn. I still don't see this fucking artillery. That's annoying. Look at that. Okay, everything's moving and what did he, I use it to kill this infantry. Okay. Can it still reach? Oh yeah, I see this anti-air, so I'm positioning my battle copter in such a way that the anti-air can't reach it. So as you can see it's putting more pressure here, it's uh, forcing the anti-air to go up. And if I had another battle copter. That'll be free here in the song. But yeah, I think the other one died. Okay, so it'll finally spot this artillery. Do I kill it? Yep, I killed the artillery. But at the expense of a tank. Like, 
this tank will get a counter hit plus a tank hit. That's a dead one. That's a dead tank. But yeah, I see this copter, so I have to put this anti-air. So about this, usually, just like recons, I don't like anti-airs being together. Because they don't, unlike tanks, they don't really reinforce each other. Anti-air reinforces other units to ward it off against the battle copters. It can't, it doesn't really defend it from anything else. So as much as possible, I, I like my anti-air to be spread apart so that it has maximum coverage as possible. I guess in this instance, it's fine because this has 5 HP. Like, I could heal it up with a black boat. It's going to be at 6, and it's still going to do decent damage against the copter. But yeah, as much as possible, normally, I would want my anti-airs to be as far apart as possible and covering as many units as possible. So, stay 16... And okay, thanks. There we go. First strike with tank. Like he sees my anti air, so he should be able to dodge that. Like he has another tank to finish it off anyway. Yeah, and he yeah. interrupts my cap. Just really not letting me have this property. Like in terms of unit count, I'm winning. In terms of value, I'm losing because he has a 5k lead. That's I guess the problem with my opponent here. He was trying too hard to maintain that advantage. Such such that he's just sacrificing units. Because like overall, I'm taking better engagements, but I don't have the real estate. But the thing with that is that the real estate, when you have good engagement, is going to be inevitable. At one point, you're gonna have it. So, I'm just playing patiently here. Like, trying to hold down, waiting for this infantry to get here. Because, as you can see, I don't have any infantry to capitalize on this. If I had capped this property right now, no one could have interrupted it. Or maybe this one, this infantry could interrupt. I could easily block that. So, yeah, I really needed infantry here. And it just sucks and I don't have it yet. So let's move on. Yeah, still not letting me have this middle property. And it's spending too many units doing that. And look at that. It's trying to cap that. Like, like, that's not gonna happen. Then he sees this. It's a mech. And I think he goes for it. Boom. And yeah, he's, yeah. Stuff is just dying right now. And he manages to avoid the anti air. So now, it's really not doing well. Like, I still have unit advantage, I still have unit count advantage, but in terms of value, I am lagging behind, I need to catch up. Okay, capturing back this property, he has vision over it, so he could interrupt it with, um, with his recon, but I think I block it. Yeah, yeah, kill recon, always kill recons. Like, you want to deprive them of vision as much as you can, but he'll have vision again, because like, He'll put this infantry on the mountains and get vision of the entire center. Right now, I don't have vision and he's capturing this, but I need to stop this. Because I can't have another property. And yeah, I'm just like, I'm just killing infantry here. Like, he already knows this anti-air exists, so might as well attack with it. Uh, but it's gonna get hit by two tanks. So, yeah, so right now... Yeah, I blocked this so that he can't he can't interrupt this because I really need to get this property kept. So I use like look at that. Both my anti-airs are so exposed right now. And he has a copter. If he kills both of these, he can punish me hard. And like yeah, this this monster's ferrying mech. And I build a medium tank. <laughs> So I can, uh, so I can, you know, have exert some uh, exert some pressure here. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know what's happening. I just protect this. I protect the stamp. So he sees the anti air. This one's dead, most likely. Also, he built a rocket here, and it's this. There's a rocket in this lander. Hmm. 
and yeah okay bye bye Antair oh Balcopter bye bye Mech and yeah he's just being super aggressive with me right now although he's losing in terms of unit count he's he's very aggressive because well that's the thing he shouldn't have been aggressive because he has like 5k unit uh 5k income advantage but he's losing in terms of unit count like you can know you're losing in terms of unit count just by looking at the stats like i'm not gonna show the stats because it's end game stats but you should know if you're losing in terms of unit count but if there is a big discrepancy with the kill to death ratio so if i were him i'd probably play it safe right now maybe build the bomber already or something and some build something big he hasn't even built a medium tank yet and it's and he has income advantage over me he's like 5k in, income advantage crucially i don't have 18k because the most comfortable income you have to build to build medium tanks every turn is 18k i only have 16k so this should have been the time for him to be pumping out medium tanks because i don't have the economy to counter that but he doesn't do it he doesn't have like a medium tank. He has a rocket, but that rocket isn't going to be in play for at least like three turns. And it's not even going to be in the conflict heavy region because it's going to be warding off this one if he plops it here. But yeah, he, he should have built like a medium tank. I think at this turn, he would build a medium tank. And he should. Because that's what you do when you have econ advantage. Like, build units that's too expensive for them to counter. So, medium tank should have been the play here, but it doesn't build a medium tank. That's fine. And a bit, I think it's a bit overextending, which isn't fine. And look at this. Yep, that's that's a useless tank now. And I get the cap. So, 4k. I also got this. So, I'm 18k now. So, the medium tank window that he had is gone since I can already pump out medium tanks every turn. Not to mention, I already have a medium tank here when I was still poor. So, okay. Yeah, I just, I'm just killing his units. I'm not even gonna touch that. It's in a city. And, yep. That's dead. Finally caught it. And he doesn't kill the 6 HP anti air. That's weird. Pretty sure he could have if he tried. And he's holding on to his power. I think that power was already available last turn, but whatever. So I hide. Well, not really hide, but I attack this infantry. And yep, that's a dead infantry. And medium tank. Moving in. And I build another mech. Mech and two tanks. This was a mistake because my copter isn't ready to re receive a mech. I probably should have built an infantry here. But whatever. So he plops the rocket here and the mech. I don't see it, but I don't know it yet, but yeah. That rocket. Well, let's see. Okay, kills my tank. And he just backs away. Well, he should have done this like turns ago, but whatever. I think he realizes that he's losing in terms of unit count. And I'm regaining my economic advantage. And yep, this, this is just going to be vision now and this mech on the mountain is going to be super good especially when protecting this property not to mention i also have this artillery so yep kill the vision but yeah he has two recons that's annoying and medium tank and then tank and then yeah that was useful i should have not built an, uh, a mech in this turn and okay i still have no idea i know i see the lander so i thought he has like two tanks here and this was pretty dumb block like i should have put something here in the forest so that he'll need two units to spot it so i was kind of can, could i have placed it in the forest i think i no, one two three four five six okay no i couldn't have placed it in the forest but whatever that was oh right because they killed his vision right now he doesn't have vision but oh they killed his vision here but he's gonna have vision under these mountains so and yeah 
Right now, I get vision in the center. There's a tank there. Let's kill the tank. Boom. Now, yes. Now, I have the center. He's still not popping his... Okay. He's not popping his hyper upgrade. Like, I guess he doesn't have to. He doesn't... He has this 5 HP. 4 HP tank. That's the only thing he could heal right now. So, that, probably that's why. And yeah, it's still doing work and it's dead. It's dead next turn. Yep, he knows. He knows it's dead. Yeah, he's saving up hyper upgrade. No, and look, and I thought, okay, there's a rocket here. Because when I check the replay, I know there's a mech that hit this, so it can't hide here. There's an anti-air here that I have vision over because I have the stack. So there is a rocket. And I'm like, okay, let's get the hell out of that area. And tanks dead. Yep, everyone's just dying. But I still have unit count uh unit count advantage. And now I have my typhoon. BAM! So my goal right now is to kill as many units as possible because this could just all go away. So I have to take advantage. Boom. So I have to kill this tank. Didn't even dedicate this um, artillery. So, yep. Uh, eh. Yeah, don't... Uh, yep, I killed it. I killed the mech. And then kill the vision at the center. Have to kill that. Start capping. Finally, I can get the center. And if I get the center, we'll be tied in properties. So, yep. Yeah. And, yep, just hide and just back away because I know there's a freaking rocket somewhere in this area. So, the medium tank. The medium tank's here, but he has a rocket, so I have to be really careful. And... Okay, here's another thing about Typhoon that I forgot to mention. It drains funds. So there's really no going around his superpower unless you're Andy, right? Because global 2 HP damage, not only does it reduce your attack, your firepower, and your defense, it also drains funds if you place them on cities to weather the damage. One time, I played against an Olaf player, and I did the mistake of putting all of my expensive units on a city. So when he did his superpower and did a global damage of uh, two global damage, all of my expensive units got healed, but my funds for the next turn was like 1k. I can only build an infantry the next turn. In this case, it's not that bad. He still has 13k, but recognize he has he should have had 20k. But thanks to my superpower, it was reduced to 13 k So, that's another thing about Typhoon that's really powerful. Not only Typhoon, but global damage in general. So, it, it's really it's really powerful. So, again, he pops Hyper Repair. Like, I guess he doesn't really get anything from Hyper Upgrade. Like, movement. Like... Yeah, he, yeah, the movement isn't going to be useful because it's raining. So, yeah, sure, I guess hyper, hyper upgrade was a better option. Don't. But basically, Andy is playing as though he doesn't have a soup. He doesn't have power because he keeps using it just to neutralize my Typhoon. And it doesn't really neutralize it because I still killed units with it. So, and I still drained his funds. So... By that alone, I already had advantage. And look at that, I'm already creeping up um, in terms of unit value. I've been beating him in terms of unit count for like the past 10 days. Okay, and he puts that, and yep, tank's dead. And right now, I know there's, an, there's a rocket here, so I am just, just wanted to find out where it is. Okay, so... Alright, next... Day 20. Okay, I get vision here. As you can see, vision is really important. So take advantage of any vision that you can get either through recons or through mountains. 
like as much as possible i wanted recons here like somewhere in the center but the thing is it takes forever for a recon to arrive the center especially in a map like this where it's a lot of planes so right now i'm just taking advantage of the mountains for my vision okay so i'm putting my mechs on mountains so that defends this property and yep i kill that i get vision over this so this this turn since i know that there's a rocket here no way i'm gonna put uh no i'm gonna push through this just killing off um like so what i do is i shift my forces from the south slowly to the north so right i'm just killing infantry so yeah i'm like look at that i'm shifting them slowly to the north because i want to get this property once i get this property we're gonna be tied so right now I just abandon this and right now this rocket is useless it's not shooting at anything so it's not a good investment on his part for this rocket look at my medium tank it's the Compare my medium tank to his rocket, they're pretty much the same price, but my medium tank is protecting these tanks. Although he has a medium tank on the way, but you know, doesn't matter. It's not gonna be relevant until two turns later. So he sees my medium tank, so he knows these tank these tanks are not to be touched right now. So Oh wait, actually good. Because he already has medium tank back, back up. So, yep, he just pushes. Yeah, first strikes this. He knows, yeah, he's goading me. He knows there's a medium tank, so, okay. Yeah, artillery's dead. Like, everyone's just dying here, but that's fine. At this point, I just want to keep, I just want to defend this with this artillery. Like, that's all I need. The rest of my units are gonna be up here fighting because I think this is a battle that I'm more likely to win as compared to the south where there's a rocket. So, okay. Shoots it and puts this artillery here. Okay, and yeah. I think I saw this. Oh no, I didn't see it. But uh, yeah, I think I'll see this later. One, two, three, four. Five. Oh no, I do see the rocket going here. So I have an idea. And let's see how I react to that. Okay, it's my turn. I don't see the rocket yet, but I know the rocket is there because I saw it come through here. I have vision over this because recon's here. Yep, recon had vision over that. And yep, I'm just look at this artillery. It's cle it's it's been super effective. Like I think it's killed like two tanks in a mech already. And bam, dead. Like I mentioned, don't leave one HP units. They're going, especially with Andy, they're going to bite you in the ass. So, yep, I kill this. Boom, bye bye, anti air. So now this one's free to do whatever it likes here. This is anti air here, so it doesn't really make sense to put my copter here. But yeah, I get trapped. Oh, oh god, there's like an APC here. So just move and then, yep, that was a bait. So now this tank is gonna get hit. Okay, so I shift my battle copter south. I hmm, considering this, there's, there's an anti air here, I don't know how smart that move was, but whatever. So keep moving. I also retreated my recon. Hmm. If I knew the rocket was there, I would have probably risked this recon just to attack this tank. But, but whatever. Yeah. Okay. Okay, normal. And yep, he gets trapped. Still doesn't spot it, but he spots the tank. And he spot now he spots the medium tank. Bang. Bang! Yes, almost. He has power again. And look at that. He has artillery and rockets here. No way I'm winning on this side. So it was a good call to go here. 
So Okay, just push. But look at that, it doesn't have any vision. Like he saw the he saw the recon, I guess. How did he see the recon? Oh yeah, because of the tank. But yeah, that was kinda dumb move. Because now he can kill that anti-air and interrupt that cap. He also kill the anti-air. Like reveal that tank. And I also know the rockets here, but he has a sniper upgrade, so I my attacks need to be killing blows. So instead of going for this stack or this rocket, which is gonna heal up anyway, I just went for this because it was at five HP. If he did hyper upgrade, it's gonna be full. It's gonna be at back at ten HP and I'd be able to cap this. So again, with Andy, just kill off the weak, kill off the weak units. Don't let them live. So, yep, this one, yeah, even even with hyper upgrade, it's not gonna cap, so that's fine. And, yeah, right now, just put this medium tank on the city to repair, because I need it to deal with this. And he doesn't have a lot of vision here. He has this vision. He sees the artillery. Oh wait, this no, this is my yeah. Okay, so he sees nothing here, basically. Okay, so yeah, he sees this infantry and nothing else. That's why you have recon. Because so that you'll have vision over here. I mean, yeah, I have vision here, but this one's gonna die. But I already have a backup recon. That's the thing, when you have like Units like anti-air and recon, which you don't really want to mass build, unlike tanks. When you feel like a recon is gonna die, build another one. Build one preemptively in case it dies. Same goes for anti-air. My strategy with anti-air is once I kill a battle copter with an anti-air, usually you build another one because I know that anti-air is probably gonna die because there's gonna be a tank that's gonna kill it. So. That's one thing to keep in mind, just to make sure that you're always covered. Next. Okay. So... And he doesn't see the artillery. This one's gonna get blasted. It's on a road. It's gonna get shelled by the artillery, and I'll have a 6 HP medium tank to kill it. So, it's not... That, that was like a really crucial mistake on his part. He still doesn't see it. Oh no, you poor summer child medium tank, you're gonna die and you don't even know it. Okay, and tank, oh, and yeah, that that's the rocket for you, but the thing is, I know now where his rocket is, so, and, okay, day 23, and we, I'm now ahead of income. That's what happens when you do good engagement. You're gonna eventually you're gonna get the income advantage. Just focus on good engagement. Like don't overextend so much. Just calm down. So bam, and then yeah, that's dead. That's a dead medium tank. And this, although it's not as powerful as an H full full HP medium tank, it still packs a punch, and it can't easily die. So. There, get three hits uh, on his tank, and I just really just to get vision of the rocket really and bang, the copter follow up, bang. Now that 15k is dead. And what did it shoot at? Shot at an artillery and a recon. That's it, it's not worth it. Meanwhile, the main medium tank is able to kill a medium tank, so in terms of engagement, I am winning. And and there we go, pop typhoon. So I could kill more units. Bam. Yeah, like everyone's just dying right now. Like yeah, you're not gonna cap that. And yeah, just keep 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 on moving forward. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, tank, tank. And 
this was stupid. I forgot to build an infantry here. Like I didn't intentionally base kit for this one. So uh, this was just dumb on my part. I forgot to build an infantry. Uh, but yeah, right now, and he pops his power. Why not your superpower, man? Like, this could have been 6 HP with your superpower because I didn't kill it. But yeah, aside from that, that's really the only. Yeah, you could have killed this. That's weird. Just use his power. So basically, he is literally nothing. He doesn't have hyper upgrade, which is the only thing that puts him at. It's the only thing that puts him at C tier. Because, like. Outside of that, he has nothing else. And he... Oh man, yeah, he just kills my units and then he spots my copter. Ah, he doesn't know I have anti hair here though. <laughs> yeah, things are just going south for him right now. He lost his rocket, he lost his medium tank, and now he's gonna lose his copter. Okay, Vision's back. And yep, just back that up. And then bye bye. Next. Yeah, that should have died. Whatever. Boom. Yeah, I'm, now I'm just shooting at this stuff. Yeah, now I'm dominating this. And thankfully, I have an infantry to capitalize now. Remember, like a couple of days ago, I didn't have infantry. To capitalize on winning this area now i do so thank god okay so now i'm just killing his artilleries they're useless now and this should have died this should have died but it didn't mother mother god okay now this art yeah look at this artillery it's still so useful it's this artillery that interrupted this gap Kill like two tanks, dealt like a killing blow to the not a killing blow, but like a big portion of the damage to the medium tank here, and now it's protecting this medium tank. And such a good that's why artilleries are really good, like, they're such an underrated unit. So now I have two artilleries. My okay, my intention with the two artilleries here is I wanted to blast this. Uh, this boat like I wanted to build the bomber but then I remembered yeah Drake's bombers kind of suck so it's better to just invest on like uh indirect so yeah let's push forward so I have me so I have like I have three medium tanks now and I have one ready that's already in play can yeah yeah it's already it's already in play it can defend it, it already defends this tank so, in terms of positioning, unit value, unit count, I am winning. But don't get too cocky. Right, not right now. Yeah, I'm just positioning like all of my units here. So, if he tries to break through this, two three, artil or three artilleries are going to fuck him up. So, not really a good idea. But yeah, this, 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 look at this black boat. It's still being useful. Mine's been dead for almost 20 days now. That sucks. And yeah, this, 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 this artillery is still trying to be valuable and it dies. Don't see this recon yet, so he has such good vision there. And oh no. Oh no, he's. He's trying to break through. Okay. Oh, he doesn't kill my recon. Okay, yeah. A recon has to die because like one HP recon is still as useful as a 10 HP recon. Because I don't really use my recon to attack unless it's like the first five days. On the mid to late game, you really just use recon for vision. You barely attack with them anyway. So look at that. He's too AP like he's just using his ABCs as blockers. So, okay. Okay, he tried to push through my death ball here. So he's gonna get punished. One, yeah, get vision first with the, with the uh, infantry in the mountains. Bang. And then, yep, kill it off. Kill, yeah, kill the pesky. Look at this. 
got hit again. Get, getting such good hits with my artilleries. And I'm kind of annoyed this recon didn't die. I thought it would really. I thought it would die but with this. Like, ah, that's a Jake copter for you. Boom. And just re just recover this and yeah. Try. I'm trying to put this back here because I'm exerting pressure in his HQ right now, but I'm not attacking it yet because I want it to be instantaneous. So yeah, I'm just killing off as many units as I can. Like. Yeah, that's annoying. They should have died. Yeah, right now I won the center, and I'm, and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get this too. So slowly but surely, I was able to regain my properties. Not to mention, I already have an artillery pointing at this black boat, so it can, I can start shelling it right now, but not yet, because I'm. So it's day 26. Let's see what he does. He only has 15 units. Christ, I I have twice his value. He's, he's just getting like remember the early remember the early 5k advantage he had? Yeah, that was such a good memory for him. And right now he's still pushing a tank and a mech here. We're just literally nothing. My forces are here. So I'm guess I'm guessing yeah, he's trying to like take back this side, but that's I don't know. Yeah, like look at this. He's still fighting bravely. But I think yeah, I think the match is already over here. So let's just zoom through this part like yeah, I tried to cap this, but really I just wanted to see what he has because it could be another rocket or a medium tank. And, that, and if that's the case, just run from it. Don't really have to fight it. Like, yeah, just check if he has something to cap. And his, he do, I don't see any infantry here, so these properties are safe. So, okay. Yep, tank. And look at this. Yep. Got mech. That tank got mech. So, yep, kill the recon. Like, do not leave those, any of those things alive. And, yep, kill the tank too. Boom. And look at that. He has his power again. It's annoying. So now, yeah, I'm just, I'm just setting up for an HQ cap here. So, yep, I am setting up for an HQ cap. Yeah, I'm just push this through. So now look at my positioning. I have two artilleries pointing at this one. The reason why I didn't attack this one yet, because I don't want him to think that I'm going for his HQ, which he probably should think. Anyway, like my entire army is at the middle, but the thing is he doesn't have any vision over it. So he probably thinks it's somewhere here. But yeah, I didn't want him to think I'm I was gunning for his HQ already so that he could still focus on the sides while ignoring the center. And another thing is that if I hit this with an artillery, it's just gonna heal up with his hyper upgrade if he does use it. So it's not really a good... I Yeah, it's better to hold off and just kill it in one move rather than just let, it, let me... let me... Sh uh, me showing my hand and just for nothing. So... Yeah, okay. Infantry hit. Yeah, B basically, like, yeah, he could kill like a couple of infantry, but it's not getting any anywhere close. Boom. And yep, medium tanks here. Like, ah, perfect range of my medium tank. And D27. Yeah. Boom, boom. And yep, that's where I kill this black boat. And. Yeah, I just kill everything. And then I start... Yeah, wait, yeah, I'm just killing everything that could interrupt this cap. Like, originally my plan was to do a surround, but since it's just giving away his units to me, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna kill them all, I guess. Boom. And I popped... Okay, the reason why I popped Tsunami, not because it was late game already and I was winning, so yeah, might as well pop my Tsunami, right? 
The reason why is I wanted to kill this medium tank. So I wanted to reduce its defense by like 1% because it's just a plane. So, yep, I, I suicide like two mechs and then I damage it with my medium tank that's going to be reduced to 2 HP and I try to kill it with my anti-air but it didn't die. There was a chance that this could have died. There was a very real chance this could have died. Like I, when I check a damage count, the damage was at least like 12 to 20 percent. So this could have died, but it didn't. So and it, I mean it's fine. I'm, I'm winning anyway. It doesn't matter. So yeah, this one's just for blocking purposes. In case he pops hyper upgrade and clears house, I don't want him to reach this. Like he could probably no, he can't kill this. Yeah, right now it's totally blocked. When I was looking at this um like during, while playing. The only thing that could stop it was if this recon killed this tank and there was a battle copter here. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's battle copter and hyper upgrade. So that's one movement. Yeah, that was the only thing that could stop it. But I don't see this mountain tile here. He actually doesn't have any battle copters. So that was the only chance, but yeah, he doesn't have it. So next, yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, this, these are just like in case I fuck up. But yeah, just keep moving, yeah, usual tank, tank, and infantry. Then, yeah, yeah, finally he pops his hyper upgrade. <laughs> yeah, he pops his hyper upgrade, and then. Yeah, there's really nothing. Like, Boom. And he builds all of his units and he doesn't even give me the courtesy to cap his HQ. He decides to resign after 28 days. So our final doesn't show here. That sucks. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, it doesn't really show. I guess it's because it's an old replay. But yeah, so Drake won against Andy, his supposed counter. Now, I think key takeaways from this match, first is pop your superpower, man. Like, I get you want to neutralize my superpower, but at one point, it's just better to bear the brunt of one superpower just so that you could use your own superpower. I mean, there was a point where you could have where. He could have killed one of my battle copters with his anti-air if he had just plus one movement. Like those like with hyper upgrade, it's not only the upgrade, the the HP bo not HP bonus, but the the healing the five HP heal that's important. It's also the plus one movement. Because your units could reach certain um, units that it could have it couldn't have reached before. And that could have given you an advantage. So I think like him holding on to his superpower was a really bad mistake. Second thing is he was overextending just to keep me from having this property. Like he wasn't he got the early real estate because I really my capture game was really bad. I didn't have any infantry to capitalize on this. To capitalize on this area and I had nothing here, so I was losing heavily in terms of a capture game but in terms of engagement i was winning i think he should have realized that by just checking the stats that he was losing in terms of engagement so he shouldn't have overextended as bad at best he could have probably given me some properties while he tries to build up his arm because he still has the income lead he can pop out medium tanks while i have to save up money just so i could get some of mine I think he should have capitalized the like the two turns. Yeah, with the two turns where he had 5k income and I only had like six uh 5k income advantage over me and just pumped out medium tanks from there. But he didn't he built out tanks and and yeah the, and he built medium tanks a bit too late when I when I was already recovering from my uh from my from my income income loss, income disparity, whatever. So that was like the second mistake, I guess. So yeah, so I guess takeaways from this, use your superpower 
and don't be too aggressive when you're winning when you're winning in terms of property build up your army and try to take note of the critical income disparities like if your opponent has less than 18k income that's the time when you really want to build medium tanks because he doesn't your opponent won't have the economy to consistently pump out medium tanks so that's where you'll try to push the advantage and uh, what else yeah basically it when you have income advantage calm down relax take the slow game like even if you're playing against drake who likes a long game it's fine you're andy like you could you could weather that out so that's it that's for my first advance wars um replay commentary let me know what you think about you know everything about the match about my commentary if you have any comments about the video in general let me know uh, i'm planning to upload another one maybe next week so keep i guess tune in the next game i think it's gonna be i have two options for the next game either another one of this long games or just another just uh, uh a medium length game i still don't know like what i'd do with it but yeah if you're you know if you're still here at the end thanks so much for watching i'll see you next week thank you so much have a great day Bye-bye.